I know that in my work life, I use automations a ton in the software that I use when I'm tracking students. So like it was really important that the CRM that we built in the last year for Compete Louisiana had automation tools to move people based on the data that we were receiving from the institution or to push communications out to students when we saw that they met a certain level um, at our enrollment funnel or they weren't meeting a certain level at our enrollment funnel and we wanted to remind them to move forward. And so I think automations are much more a part of our life than maybe we recognize at times. Um, but how does AI automation either play into helping you do your work or create your work product or help serve your students? I keep thinking about this in terms of things that we already have. And in, in my role in at the Center for Teaching Innovation at UNO, I get teachers all the time who need to integrate publisher content or want to do something as simple as build a quiz in the LMS so that grading will happen for them or want to use Turnitin so that plagiarism detection will happen for them. And I think people don't think about that as task automation. It's so built into their everyday life that those sort of checks that they're doing, that they want their students to have to go through, that they don't want to have to spend the time themselves to do. It is really time consuming to check every reference on everything. If you think maybe a student plagiarized, it is much less time consuming to check the AI or sorry, the plagiarism percentage uh, on turn it in and then go from there and double check and do your work from there. So I think that there are all these things that instructors are using and are used to using. And what I would be interested to see is how they can use some of this stuff that is coming out to expand that world and to keep going with the tools that they're already using rather than thinking about it like something new and scary, just an expansion of what they're doing already. I was going to talk about cognitive load. Um, you know, as educators, we do a, a lot of little admin tasks with the little stuff um, for your classroom compatriots. You know, I'm thinking of, like like you said, Meredith, grading quizzes and, and then those little things. But also, there's always the paperwork. There's always the email. There's always these things that are useful that still take our time and attention and, and eat up our mental energy. Now, I do not do this. But I know that a lot of people will use AI tools to generate emails for them or to generate templated forms for them. And these little things that they don't have to think about that can be done very, very quickly, very, very easily, free up time for other more time consuming tasks, or they free up time. And I'm trying to remember how it was said in um, in a webinar that I attended, uh, but, but it was essentially, it frees up time for your passion. It frees up time for the things that truly matter to you that you want to focus on. And I think that's valuable. We're having a lot of conversations around productivity and efficiency, and I think that's valuable. But the idea that we have a tool at our disposal that can give us back time to do the things that we want to do, I think that's important. And I think contextualizing how AI can take that cognitive load off of us is a way to put a positive light on it. It's not you um, rescinding your authority or your autonomy in these tasks. I'm, I'm never going, let me say that now, but we'll see for years from now when our overload, I'm sorry, TJ. Uh, I don't intend to ever ask a, a chat bot to template an email for me. And that's because of the way that I process. But I know a lot of people who will struggle to write very professional emails and they're trying to write an appropriate cover letter or a, an appropriate recommendation for somebody or, or a support letter for someone's tenure. And they want to do it right because they want to do right by their colleagues. I, I think if somebody wants to use a chat bot for that and it's going to help them express themselves better, I am all for them using that tool. Um, and in that sense, it almost becomes kind of like a, a cognitive assistant, assist, a cognitive assistive assistant getting that help there. And I think that, again, that's a thing that has felt. I will say for me, the most fun part has been um, seeing what I can do with presentations. I do a lot of different presentations for 
um, faculty professional development and for students for class and seeing how I I'm not very good at graphic design not my thing so I can get the content down but seeing how I can just put in all these different components and have it pop something out it does it helps with that cognitive load where I can worry more about the content and less about the design um, so I know that's a very minimal usage of it but I I'm having fun I like to imagine the opposite of that as well. You say, I'm really good at the content and I'm not good at the design. Well, imagine people who are great at the design and have trouble with the content, right? There's there's always the flip side of this. So I love that with automation, you can sort of pick and choose which parts of it, like Megan said, she doesn't see herself creating, uh, having it create an email template, but maybe it would run through a list of names for her to help send out that email, to, like whatever that email is, in a way that then she's not hand putting in. If you've ever done a mail merge, you've done an automation, um, which I don't know, maybe setting it up took you more time than it was worth. But as these things get better, that stuff is just going to help us and you get to pick and choose which parts of these automations are useful for you, which parts of these are going to give you back that brain space so that you can think about the things that you're really passionate about. If I don't have to worry about the formatting of my publication, or if I'm a grad student, I don't have to worry about the formatting of my thesis or my dissertation to get it uploaded correctly, and that's just a thing that will happen for me, that is hours and hours that someone's going to get back. Uh, I think like we're all familiar with that nightmare, right? And that's just hours of time that we can have back in our lives. And so I always want to think about that picking and choosing as something that we can use in our life and something that we can give to our students as we're getting them to learn how to use these things for our classes and then also looking towards their future. How can we help them discern what's useful to automate, what ways can they automate, and what things is that going to free up for them to then be able to think creatively, think critically, think analytically, uh, which is, I hope, what all of us are really getting towards in education, rather than um, spending those times on the, my dad used to call them, uh, trained monkey tasks where it's just a matter of putting the thing in the box and you could train a monkey to put the thing in the box. You can't train a monkey to think in the same way. And so I, I'm hoping that we can help expand for our students what those pieces are. I think for me, um, I really have been passionate, I think my whole career in education about creating personalized learning experiences and I've always come up against the, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough capacity. I don't have enough resources to curate, you know, in a class of 30, 30 different learning experiences. And I think that AI is one way to do that. I think you can leverage um, with the right data inputs, you can leverage the algorithms to really do some interesting predictive work that yes, you could do by just kind of looking at grade curves and whatnot, but being able to leverage every move that they make in your system, not just for surveillance sake, but being able to take how they even interface with your learning management system and better understand them as a learner, that is such an amazing opportunity that I, the human Elizabeth, just doesn't have the time in her day to do. But the sort of outcome of leveraging um, automated AI algorithmic uh, analytics is that the system can do that. And then I can take that data and then instead of it being used in a punitive way, oh, you only spent five minutes on this quiz and um, that's a bad thing. It, it becomes a learning experience. Well, why did they only spend five minutes on this quiz? Not just the grade is the outcome, but the experience is the outcome. And then using that to compile really um, dynamic profiles of the learner as they progress through not only your course, but if you're a program coordinator through your program and really understanding that student um, 
obviously at the human level because you have that human interaction, but really sort of understanding them digitally, which in an online learning environment, sometimes that's the only thing you have if the student or if the learner is not one to engage with you personally or you know physically. And you have those learners who only engage with this, the system and the material and the content. They're not interested in the like learner to learner interaction. They're not interested in the instructor to learner interaction. They're interested in the learner to content to get the, to get it done to you know accomplish whatever goal. And so I think for me, um the sort of algorithmic possibilities and sort of um, reclaiming the surveillance that is already embedded in what we do and sort of Robin Hood it and like surveil for good if that is a thing that you can do. But just really like, yes, we are able to see all these things you are doing, but it's not for punishment. It's to better help you. And then I also like um, chatbots. So, you know, most websites you interact with now have some sort of chatbot that pops up that answers the questions that don't really need a human to answer them. I think as someone who fields an enormous amount of questions a day that at least 50% of them could be automated. You know, we joke like it's in the syllabus, but I think like that's a chat bot, right? It's the syllabus chat bot. Like every time the learner asks a question, like, when is this due or how many points this is? And the, the response, it's on a t-shirt, it's on mugs, it's in the syllabus. Like, well, that's a bot, right? Like we can train the AI to answer those questions and, and, and the joke changes, but it also gives an immediate response to a question that could be the determining factor on whether that student persists in your course or not. So again, that's all kind of wrapped up in creating these personalized learning experiences, but I think the automation of things allows us to not only free up our minds as educators, as, as faculty and staff, to do those uh, tasks that require much more of our human thought, but it also gives us the opportunity to better understand our students in a routine and consistent way that helps provide them the supports that they need in real time. I'll jump in here. So I'll list some things that I'm actually doing with it and then some sort of aspirational applications of AI to kind of automate for productivity. Um, but also kind of thinking ahead to the classroom and how I might use it um, there with students. So uh, right off the bat, any kind of formulaic writing, I mean, especially these um, AI chatbots, if, if I have um, a letter of recommendation or a cover letter or something like that, um, I, you know, I can start there, um, prompt it well, and then edit from there. And um, that saves me a lot of time. Um, internet searches now, you know, I've got Bard built into at least my um, Chrome browser and, you know, it comes up first anytime I do any kind of search and that really helps me to find information and it's a starting point. It's kind of like having like an AI Wikipedia at your command. Um, and at least Bard and Bing offer um, references so that you can go back and verify the information. Um, but that stuff's really being pushed to me, and I think it's going to be pushed to everyone pretty soon. It's radically changing the way that searches happen, and that sort of old style of you, you know, put in something, um, you search for something, and, and you get a list of potential um, applicable websites. I, I, I think that's going to be, uh, you know, going to go into the, the trash heap of history, so to speak, um, pretty soon. Um, writing summaries. Um, I've, I've had it do executive summaries. I've had it um, do summaries of articles, even, you know, stuff that I'm teaching. Um, and it does a fairly good job. Um, so I think um, um, that's definitely an application. And I think all this is sort of like the lower order Bloom's taxonomy type stuff. It does really well. Um, I think folks have already mentioned um, doing citations, like, like you know, editing for citations and, and reference lists and sort of making sure that things are uh, in whatever format, APA or whatnot, that, that one likes. Um, it can do that. Um, translations, I don't use that as much, um, but that's something that it does well. And I think was one of the initial use cases for scholars was to sort of, um, you know, clean up and translate text. Um, uh, for publication. Uh, video transcription, um, lots of tools that do that. Um, that's AI. And that's one of those things where like we've been using it for a while, we didn't know it. Um, one thing that I'm using it more and more for is brainstorming. 
especially these presentation creators like Tom, you know, just like, you know, you write up an idea for a presentation in text, and then it churns out a design for you in some kind of slideshow, and you may or may not use it, but, and that's not the point for me, it's just I get to, you know, see some examples that start me, get me thinking about what direction I want to go in as I actually design. But I think as these tools become more and more powerful and integrated with the Office suites we already use, like Microsoft Office is coming out with Copilot, uh, which will also you know, recommend designs for you. Um, and again, they've been doing that for a little while, but the, the next generation is gonna be way more powerful. So, um, but for now, like using those tools to help me brainstorm ideas for, for design, and then eventually just having it designed for me you know, as it gets more uh, advanced. Um, some cool tools that I've seen, uh, especially useful for students, um, are some of these teaching focused um, AI tools that will create, like you feed it content, instructional materials, and it'll create flashcards and study guides, and it'll annotate for you. Um, that's pretty neat. I think that'll be a real time saver for students, but I could also see faculty using that maybe to you know write lecture notes or lecture or, or summaries or whatnot. Um, so now I'm heading into kind of the more aspirational uses. Um, lecture videos. I, I definitely, I think there are tools out there that can help us create videos from a transcript. You know, you write up the transcript and it'll do the video and even make the slides for you. Um, text to image. Um, these tools are getting more powerful. I think that'll be a real time saver if you need to create a custom open source image. Uh, and there's not something immediately available out there, that'll be very helpful. Text to video, uh, that's getting more and more powerful. I saw, I saw some kind of survey they did a few years ago of AI developers, like what, what feature, like what will AI be able to do in the short term and the medium term and the long term? And they like predicted when this stuff would happen and text to video was like supposed to be way off, but actually we have some pretty neat text to video tools out there already. So this is ahead of the curve here, um, but I haven't used it yet, but it's something that I want to try using. And, you know, there's such an em emphasis um, on multimedia in designing online courses, you know, that text isn't enough. We need to have video, we need to have images, so on that having AI tools available to help us generate that content will be such a time saver for us. So those are just some of the uses that I've thought about. Um, and I'm sure there, there are lots more uh, and I'm still playing around.